Hi friends, welcome back to Faith and Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee. Um, today I'm gonna film my very first garden tour of the year. It's, as you know, it's been a really crazy couple of months and I haven't had the chance to do this yet. Um, I will go ahead and warn you that my garden is out of control because I haven't had time. <laughs> it's been pretty low on my list of things that I've needed to accomplish. Um, and so it is much, it looks much different this year than it did last year. And I'm not ashamed because life happens and I'm happy to have a garden. I've been eat, we've been eating out of it and, um, I have lots of things that are, um, putting on fruit and whatnot. And I've, uh, the garden has been very therapeutic for me this year. Um, when I'm feeling overwhelmed or before I have to leave the house for one of my many obligations, I'll sit out here, listen to the chickens, look at the garden, and it's been so nice. Um, and it just echoes how important the garden is to me and how I need to have it. Um, before we get started, I just want to say that I'm not my best today. Um, Tom and I just found out um, that one of our good friends passed away last night in an accident. A very awesome young man who we were very close with very very good person we had just had him over for dinner um, a few weeks ago and we're still both kind of processing and in shock Tom more so than me this was Tom's one of his high school friends and I've known him for years but not as many um, and I wasn't as close so um, Tom's grief is I can't he's going through it right now um, but I'm definitely still kind of processing it myself um, so that we just hours ago found that out. Um, so if I don't see my usual tripper self, please bear with me. I want to show you my garden and I'm excited to be here with you, but there's a lot going on. So anyway, um, let's get to it. First of all, do you guys like my new garden shoes? My, um, in-laws gave them to me for my birthday. They've got chickens on them. The brand is called Slogger. And I really like them. First things first, this is my beloved lily patch. And look at how overgrown with weeds it is. That This right here is the perfect example of how busy I've been and how unable to manage the garden I've been because that's, this is crazy. You can't even see. There are lilies in here and you can't even see them because it's so overgrown. So I need to get out here and clean this up. Next, I have poppies, lettuce, um, Cosmos, a little bit of garlic, and then these are my sugar snap peas, and they are done. I need to pull these out, and I will. I might even do that today, actually. They are covered in mildew, and they are, they are done. They are done, so. So I need to pull these guys out. I still have lettuce because this has been so shaded. This lettuce is actually still putting on. So, and the poppies too. Usually by now, it's the end of July. Normally these are gone by now because of the heat, but because they're in the shade, they're hanging in. And then I've got, these are Cosmos. They're going to come on soon. This is Lauren's Grape Cosmo, or I'm sorry, Lauren's Grape Poppy. Look at how stunning that is. Just absolutely stunning. Now, I haven't taken you guys on a garden tour at all this year, so you don't know any of the fun little things that I have going on, but um, I have some volunteers because this is my second year gardening, so it's natural that I would look at these volunteer sunflowers. <laughs> so inside, so I have my sugar snap peas and, and green beans growing on an arch trellis here in front of the fireplace. And in the middle here, I just have some wood chips and some um, fabric to keep the grass down. Last year, I let the chickens in here and I just threw a bunch of like scrap stuff in here for them to work through, including my spent sunflowers. So these are all volunteer sunflowers and look how big they are. Like, look at, let's see, look at this one here. Like that baby is so tall, it's sticking out the side, but even so, it's crazy, those are so tall. And if we come inside here, I actually have one back here that has bloomed. Oh, and there's a little bee on it. Look how lovely. Man, look at the pollen on it. That's awesome. There's that tall sunflower. 
Oh, it's so big. <laughs> and then down here I have carrots and garlic and beets. Last year, I had this as like a cottage garden area, and there are a few California poppies over here that came back, but I, I didn't plant anything over here this year. I was way too busy, so this went underused this year. It's empty, but that's okay. My raspberries along the fence have been doing great. I've been harvesting those and eating them, so yummy. Now last year, this bed had mostly flowers in it. It was pretty much a flower bed. I did not plant any of the same stuff in here as I did last year, except chamomile. Um, I have a big chamomile patch behind me here, and this was also here last year. Um, I like this spot for it. I like that it's right at the front of the garden. When you walk in, you can smell it, um, and I'll probably keep that there every year. Here I have rhubarb. Um, it was a, an established uh, one-year-old plant, so this is its second year. I have two of them here, and I'm not harvesting off of them. The first two years, you are not supposed to harvest rhubarb. You're supposed to let it keep it, uh, put its energy into establishing itself. Next year, I'll be able to harvest off of it, but it's huge. I didn't know the leaves got so big. It's literally like I could hide in here. It's so big. And then down here i have strawberries so i do i did chamomile rhubarb and strawberries in this bed however it's been really frustrating because i have not been able to eat any of these strawberries because something keeps getting in here and eating them before i can get to them so next year i will definitely be see this one got eaten right off of the plant Next year, I will definitely be investing in a green stock. I wanted to this year, I just didn't have the money so that I will actually be able to eat some of my strawberries because I did not get any of them. Something else did. All right, same as last year, along this cattle panel, I have my tomatoes. I have um, a bunch of different varieties. Some of them I have labeled, some of them I don't. This is a, let's see. Uh... So I have a sun sugar cherry tomato. That's what these are. These are all Romas in here. I have red onions growing in front of these tomatoes. Down here I have an early girl variety and that's what all of these are here. And then more onions growing in front here. Down here I have my zucchini. I've been having a really bad issue with bunnies this year. I've actually caught several um, and I let Benny out and he chases them. He never catches them, but they still keep coming back. Um, and I'll tell you why that's an issue. <laughs> so annoying. It literally drives me crazy. And then also because we've gotten so much rain this year, you're gonna see me out here dancing because the mosquitoes are unreal this year. I have been covered head to toe in mosquito bites all season long and it's been so annoying. Um, I still have my cucumbers here. They still have um, flowers on them, so I've left them in hopes that I'll get some more. I did not get many. I think I was able to eat four, maybe five cucumbers because the bunnies would get to them before I could get to them. Um, and then this here, this is my pepper bed and it has been absolutely phenomenal. I've been getting bell peppers. I've been getting, let's see, these are cayenne peppers, but they haven't turned red yet. Um, more bell peppers in here. I have jalapenos right here. Um, and then this here, I have a bunch of these plants. This is my favorite pepper this year. It is, there we go. This, this is called garden salsa. It's a medium hot pepper, Scoville heat 3500. It is the best pepper I have ever grown. I absolutely love it. I've eaten one every single day and it is so prolific. I have, this is just one plant and it's loaded down with them. And I come out here and harvest off of them every day. It's loaded down. Such, such a delicious pepper. 
and I have, I think, four of these in here. And then next to it, I have banana peppers growing. I haven't harvested any of these yet, um, and they have also been getting munched on by the bunnies. So, but I love the varieties that I chose this year because they finally actually look like banana peppers. I've got some kind of purple pepper hiding in there. Haven't had that yet. Looks really good. More bell peppers. So I have quite the variety of peppers this year. And that was something I really wanted because I, oh, literally getting attacked by mosquitoes. That's something I really wanted. Peppers were on my list of um, some uh, plant that I really wanted to grow a lot of and be successful with this year because I ate so many of them last year. Um, and I want to grow what I'm going to eat and preserve. And peppers were high on that list and I, it worked out. I have lots. Here I have, um, this is the first year, this is my second year with my echinacea. So that means being a um, perennial, it comes back every year. So it's been producing and it's so gorgeous. I haven't done anything with it yet. I grew it to put in tea and I just haven't had time to think about it, but I've enjoyed looking at it and I've enjoyed having this color in the garden. This mess here, um, I grew, I started some tomatoes. They were like a micro tomato that I started back in January for fun. This is them. <laughs> and they are out of control. And they're definitely not a micro tomato. They're huge. They're like the size of a grape tomato. So not sure about that. And I had another echinacea that just, yeah, this is a mess. I don't even, I don't even want to talk about this. That's, that's a mess. Over here I have celery and just some random flowers. Got some cosmos. I've got carnations in the back here. I've got um, a pink celery variety and a regular celery variety growing in here. All right, now I wanna talk about this for a second. I did not plant, the only squash I planted this year was my zucchini. I thought that this plant was a volunteer pumpkin because I saw it sprout um, and I thought it was a pumpkin, I left it. It ended up being whatever this squash is. This is what it looks like. I did not plant this. I have no idea what this is. It's like kind of striped as you can see and it has taken over my garden. That's what all of this is. It's all in here. They're growing everywhere. You can see one in there. They're down there. They are, oh gosh, look at that. The bunny destroyed that one. They're everywhere. It goes all the way down into my garden down there. It wraps all the way around my herb garden in towards my tomatoes over there. This has, this monstrosity has taken over and I don't even know what it is. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> but you know what? I actually think that's kind of fun. And I haven't had time to be out here anyway, so whatever. I kind of think it's fun that my garden looks like a jungle this year. Um, it adds a little bit of mystery. Who knows what this squash is gonna be? It might be really tasty, I might really love it. Ah, uh, whatever. I'm just letting it do what it wants to do, but I am trying to keep an eye on where it goes, because right now this one's growing into this other tomato bed. Put that on the ground there. So here, this is my other tomato bed. Um, it's wild. I didn't have a trellis. I did a kind of makeshift Florida weave where I have tea posts in here and I used, um, I had yarn, so I used yarn to kind of string my tomatoes up a little bit. My tea posts are really short. My yarn is not very strong. I made a video at this point. I don't know if I'm going to put it up or not. If it's up, cool and if it's not then no I filmed one but might not put it up because it's redneck <laughs> I considered uh, when I filmed it and was thinking about it I considered titling the video redneck Florida weave but I really want this to be an educational channel as well as an entertaining one so I don't know if I'll put that video up the concept is solid you have T posts um, or some sort of um, stick of some kind and then you use like um, I use yarn, but you could also use like um, some sort of thick thread or small rope or something. Um, and you string, you, you weave in between the posts and you hold the tomatoes up. And as they get taller, you add more of whatever thread or rope or whatever you use. Um, and it like 
holds them up as they grow. The concept is really solid, but by the time I decided to do it, they were already so out of control um, that it didn't really make that much of a difference. Like in some places, they're almost as tall as me, right? Like right here, it's like half a foot shorter than I am. Um, so it got out of control. However, because I've pruned them so heavily, they're actually still doing really well. They look really healthy. I've got a lot of fruit in here doing really well. They're looking really good. Um, so I'm okay with it. I'm not that disappointed, even though in, in here it's pretty jungly. I definitely need to come in here and do some more pruning in here. But they're hanging in there. They are hanging in there. So... <laughs> This tomato bed got away from me this year, but it was a fun experiment. Over here, I have onions. These onions are doing better than any of the others. They look really good and they're growing in size and doing really well. Here, I've got Brussels sprouts back here. I had planted the Kalima bush beans right here by recommendation of Jess from Roots and Refuge, and they got completely eaten. There's no sign of them. This is a weed. There's no sign of them whatsoever. They got eaten. Um, by whatever has been plaguing my garden. So that was a bust, which really bummed me out. I was looking forward to having those um, here. I do want to point out to you that this is one of the beds that I did the um, grass clipping mulching for to reduce weed pressure. And there are har very few weeds in here. And I have not weeded this bed. Um, I have not fooled with anything out here <laughs> in several weeks. Um, and this bed looks really, really good. So I definitely like the grass clipping mulching that I've been doing. Um, I have a video about it. I'll link it down below if you haven't seen it. I like it a lot. Um, definitely a solid technique for reducing weed pressure. I thought that these were pear trees. I definitely like planted pear seeds, but they're doing this weird thing where they're flowering and I have no idea what that's about. I don't know if that's normal or if these are not pear trees like I thought. I, I don't know what's going on with that. Here I've got my mint. My roses growing up the trellis here. They're beautiful. These are my elderberries. They flowered, but then over here the flowers all fell off or got eaten or something. So how do they turn into berries if the flowers fall off? Like, I don't know what to do with that, but they smell divine. Oh, they smell so good. More tomatoes, carnations in here. I can't wait for these to bloom. They're gonna be stunning. There are some more of those onions. Look how good those onions look. More tomatoes in here, more onions down there. Now, this is the herb bed that I added this year. I believe I've talked about that on my channel earlier before I took my break. It is wild. Now I want you to remember that I have gotten a lot of rain this year. It's actually sprinkling as I'm out here with you right now. It's rained three to four times a week so far this year. I've hardly done any watering, which is such a blessing because I've been so busy. I'm not sure I would have been able to keep up with the watering this year, so praise God for that. Um, but because of that, everything has exploded and last year was such a drought and I know it wasn't just for me a lot of people really suf suffered um, from a lack of rain last year so my garden was much more reduced in size and so I planted more intensely this year expecting it to be like last year but then we've gotten all this rain and everything has just exploded so my herb garden back here is insane it literally is as tall as me let me see it's always so hard to convey this to you through the camera. This is the same height as me. Like, this is crazy. And I actually don't know what this is. <laughs> so I planted this. I have absolutely no idea what this is, but it has flowered now. It's super tall. This is what the, the stem looks like, all the way down. And it smells super spicy. It's got like a spicy smell. Yeah, it smells good. I have three of them. I don't know what these are. Here, my basil. My basil is a million times bigger than it was last year. It's so big. I've been harvesting and eating some every single day. Um, my oregano got buried <laughs> down here. I have 
I think this is Korean hyssop. I'm pretty sure is what this is. I got it for tea and it's just been like hiding in here. And then down here I have sage. I've got rosemary hiding. I've got thyme hiding in there. And then these are either tomatillos or ground cherries. I planted both. I don't, I've never grown either before, so I don't know the difference. And I haven't been brave enough to try them yet. Let me see if I can find. Look at that little baby squash. Look at that. That is crazy. They're everywhere. Um, let me see if I can find a mature. What is that? Is this a tomatillo or is this a ground cherry? I've never had tomatillos or ground cherries, so I don't know that I would know by tasting it which one it is. Let's try it. I don't even know if this is ripe. Ooh, that tastes really good. Oh my gosh. It's not ripe because it is ooh, sour, but that flavor is good. Okay. That makes me think that this is, these are ground cherries. I'm going to go, I, I think these are ground cherries and I'm pretty sure that they turn yellow. The inside is yellow when they are ripe. And I think they're called ground cherries because when they get ripe, they fall to the ground and that's when you can eat them. So I'm gonna leave this alone. Let me take you over to the tomatillos and show you why this is confusing. One more time. This is what these look like. I'm pretty sure these are ground cherries. Over here, so these are my zucchini and cucumbers for reference. This is the, look at the squash. The squash is literally taking over the garden. Um, let me see if I can get in here. So over here, this is the pepper bed. So I showed you guys over here. I've got bell peppers growing. I've got all of these. And I think these are tomatillos. I don't think that these are ground cherries. I did try to eat one of these not that long ago. <sighs> and it was not good. Okay, first of all, you can already see the size difference. This is massive. This is so much bigger. Yeah, this is a tomatillo. I already know, this is a tomatillo. But they're so similar looking. They're very similar looking, except this is much bigger. So I think these are ground cherries, these are tomatillos. I had already tried to eat one of these and didn't care for it, but that was weeks ago. So let me try again, maybe they just weren't mature. I don't know what these look like when they're mature. Oh, I'm nervous. I can't even, I can't bite into it. <laughs> the inside of it's like weird. It's not bad actually, but the ground cherries are almost a little sweet even with it not being ripe and it was sour, it still had like this underlying like sweet. This tastes like a vegetable. Like this is full vegetable, these tomatillos. I can get behind this, but I think I need to leave them a little longer, but I don't know what they look like when they're ripe. Interesting. Okay, so that's everything. Tomatoes, 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 tomatoes. Cucumbers and zucchinis right here peppers back here, my crazy herb bed, celery, celery and um, carnations and that crazy squash plant, more tomatoes. Over here I've got um, onions and Brussels sprouts and then over here I've got my rhubarb and my strawberries and my chamomile. I just noticed my mint is flowering so I've got to come out here and pick these off because I am I'm not done with it yet. Don't stop now. And then over here along the shed, I've done a little mini like cottage garden. I have some calendula, some zinnias. Uh, oh, I don't know what this is, but it's beautiful. What is this? Oh, this is straw flower. Oh, I didn't think I was gonna have any of these. Listen. 
Oh my gosh, that is stunning. I did not know I was gonna have any straw flower. I was wondering what this was gonna be. I saw these little balls and I was like, what kind of flower is that? This is straw flower. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have some right here too. That's what this is also. Oh my gosh, so exciting. I don't know what this is. I have my day lilies, more zinnias. This one's yellow. Look at that. That's pretty. Some sweet alyssum down here. But I need to come in here and do some serious weeding because this is overgrown in here big time. And then let's come visit the chickies. So guys, a couple of updates on the chickens. The roosters are no longer with us. They have moved on. And so now I just have the girls. Um, however, I've had an issue because I have an egg eater. Somebody is coming in here and eating the eggs. And it's super frustrating. Yeah, look, they're coming in here looking for them. And I think it's more than one. I think it's several of them that are coming in here eating them. So if I'm not out here to catch the eggs right as they lay them, they're getting eaten. And I think it's because the roosters were stressing them out. I had four roosters to 12 hens, which is not an appropriate ratio. And I think they were stressed out, um, but they're gone now. They've not been gone that long. So I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. If it was just one girl eating the eggs, I would separate them, se separate her from the others. It's not, I think it's multiple of them that are doing it. Um, and it's really very frustrating because the whole reason that I have the chickens are for the eggs and I'm not getting any eggs because they're eating them before I can come out here to get them. Um, very, very, very frustrating. So if you have any tips, please let me know. But I've been reading online that this is a really hard habit to break and I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do about this. I really don't. I really don't. Super frustrating. So the last thing I want to do with you today before we end this video is harvest my garlic because my garlic has been ready to harvest for a little while now and I keep putting it off because I want to do it with you. Um, this was my very first time growing garlic and I'm really excited to see how it did. So let's pull this up. Okay, this one came up without breaking. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Look at that. Very cool. All right, friends, sorry, the lighting in here is really bad. It's super dark outside because it's about to storm. Um, and so I've got my overhead light in here on, which is not great for filming. So I'm gonna go through this garlic right now. If I have any bulbs that are in really good shape that I didn't damage in my very aggressive harvesting, then I will attempt to save some for planting next year. I'm only going to try to save one bulb because I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it successfully. It's gonna be an experiment. And I don't want to waste this because this was my first time doing this. I want to eat as much of this as possible. So if I find a good bulb, I'm just going to save one. The rest I'm going to go ahead and um, process for food storage. Here's how I'm going to do it this year. Last year, I have two cloves of garlic in here. This is last year's garlic um, that I bought from the farmer's market. I didn't grow garlic last year. So I saw this online, I don't remember where, it works. I took a mason jar, filled it halfway with white distilled vinegar, just like regular canning vinegar, and I put my cloves in there. And they have maintained their integrity and been delicious, and I've been cooking with them this whole time. Um, I have this jar full of cloves, and I've just got two left. They do have a vinegary taste when you store them this way. I have yet to have a dish where the vinegary flavor affects <laughs> the dish. The garlic flavor is still super strong. 
If I were to open this up, um, it's going to smell super vinegary, garlicky, really, really good. And then I keep this in the fridge. That's really important to mention. So a mason jar, halfway filled with white distilled vinegar, filled up enough that you're covering your cloves with it, um, and then store it in the fridge. And it stores indefinitely. I don't know what the age is on this because it's been almost a year now, like probably like nine-ish months that these have been in the fridge and I'm still cooking with them. So this is an older, this is last year's. I'm going to start a new jar here just because I think it's probably, not to say that I couldn't refill that one. I'm just going to start fresh. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill this up about halfway. I'll top it off if I need to. And then I'm going to go through here. So like this one is super damaged. I hit this one with my Hori Hori and gouged it really bad. So this one for sure I'm not keeping for next year. So I'm just gonna pop these open. And um, I am going to peel the papery outside off of it. And you know you have all of the papery outside off when the little piece that's sticking up, this guy, isn't there anymore. Once this is gone, you know you've gotten all the paper. I've gotten all the paper off of this. There's, I've already rinsed it outside. There's no dirt on it. And I'm going to drop it into my jar of vinegar. And I'm going to go through and do that with all of these. It also allows me to have eyes on each and every clove. So I'll be able to see if there are any major blemishes with any of these. If there's any reason why I can't store any of these, I'll know because I will have handled each and every clove. Of garlic. It is several hours later. I ended up doing a lot of things in between. Um, I did end up saving a bulb of garlic. Uh, you want to save if you're if you're interested in saving some garlic to plant in the future. Um, the bigger the clove, the bigger the bulb. Um, and so this is a really big bulb with big individual cloves. I saved this. It looks like there's one. Eight, eight or nine cloves in here. So if I'm able to successfully store this for the fall time and plant this, then this one bulb will give me eight or nine um, bulbs of garlic when I plant the individual cloves. However, because I only had um, about a dozen, I want to use them. I didn't want to potentially ruin them because I've never stored garlic for planting before. So I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it successfully. This is an experiment. I didn't want to risk ruining too much of it since I already didn't have that much of it. Um, me growing garlic this year was in itself an experiment. I had never grown garlic before. It went really well. I was successful. This is beautiful. I'm really excited about it. I bought this um, garlic from Haas Tools um, and I bought about a dozen um, cloves and, and it went great really happy with it. So I'm going to try to um, store some of it for planting in the fall. I'm going to plant my garlic in probably about October, which you will be taken along with. And then in the meantime, I ended up with about two and a half pints of garlic cloves. And just to reiterate for you, because this works and it's so easy, all I do is peel my garlic so that it's the individual peeled clove. I put it in a mason jar and I cover it with white distilled vinegar and then I keep this in the fridge um, and I just pull from it whenever I need garlic for a recipe. Um, it does infuse a bit of a vinegary flavor into the garlic but not enough that I've ever had an issue with it in a recipe. It always still tastes great and tastes fresh and has that quintessential garlic flavor that you'd want um, and it preserves it for a long time. Um, I don't know the exact numbers, but um, I still have a couple of cloves in here, and I stored this about nine months ago, nine, ten, somewhere, almost a year ago. I have several things. This was my first garden tour this year. Um, I have several things that I am planning on doing because it is time to start thinking about the fall garden, but I'm going to put that in a separate video. So thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. Today's been kind of a weird day, kind of an emotional day, um, but I... I'm very grateful that you guys um, stuck it out with me, and I'm just so happy to be back posting gardening content. And um, the garden has been a bit of a struggle this year, just because life has been a bit of a struggle this year. Um, but as always, it brings me so much peace and so much joy, and I'm so incredibly thankful for it. What a gift gardening is. What a gift the earth is, and I'm just so grateful for it. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I can't wait to see you in my next one. Have faith and keep moving forward. Bye.
Windows down, scattered clouds, smell of spring outside. Open road, you sit in close. Let's go somewhere far away.